Minorities Returnare. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, this Monday marks the public inauguration that will usher in President Obama's second term. And we turn now to the call for him to put more than 50 million Americans living in poverty at the top of his agenda. The issue has garnered attention in part because Obama will take the oath of office with his hand placed on two Bibles, one owned by Abraham Lincoln and the other owned by Martin Luther King Jr., known for his civil rights and anti-poverty activism. The inauguration also comes on January 21st, the federal holiday in honor of the civil rights leader, who delivered his I Have a Dream speech 50 years ago at the Lincoln Memorial. Obama will face the memorial as he takes the oath. He's addressed the issue of Martin Luther King and poverty before, in 2011, when he spoke at the dedication of the Martin Luther King Monument at the National Mall. Nearly 50 years after the March on Washington, our work, Dr. King's work, is not yet complete. We gather here at a moment of great challenge and great change. In the first decade of this new century, we have been tested by war and by tragedy, by an economic crisis and its aftermath that has left millions out of work and poverty on the rise and millions more just struggling to get by. Indeed, even before this crisis struck, we had endured a decade of rising inequality and stagnant wages in too many troubled neighborhoods across the country. The conditions of our poorest citizens appear little changed from what existed 50 years ago. Neighborhoods with underfunded schools and broken down slums, inadequate health care, constant violence, neighborhoods in which too many young people grow up with little hope and few prospects for the future. President Obama speaking in 2011 at the dedication of the Martin Luther King Monument on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Well, journalist, author Tavis Smiley has spent the last year crisscrossing the country with activist, professor, preacher Cornell West to start a national conversation on poverty, which they address in their book, The Rich and the Rest of Us, A Poverty Manifesto. They've called on President Obama to organize a White House conference on the eradication of poverty in America. And tonight, Tavis will be in the nation capital, moderating a nationally televised symposium called Vision for a New America, a Future Without Poverty. The event begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time and will broadcast live on C-SPAN at George Washington University. Tavis Smiley joins us now from Washington. Tavis, welcome back to Democracy Now! Um, talk about what you're doing and what you want President Obama to do to convene. Thank you, Amy and Juan, for having me back on, um, and Dr. West sends his regards. Um, first of all, let me just say very quickly, with regard to the King Bible being used in this inauguration, I'm, I'm feeling ambivalent about that, um, in part because I, I always, um, I have always regarded Dr. King as the greatest American this country has ever produced. And any celebration, any honor of Dr. King uh, that keeps his legacy uh, at the center uh, of the conversation is important. Um, but I'm feeling some sort of way about this, because at a moment where this country is using more drones than ever before, oftentimes killing innocent women and children at a moment when this country continues to render poor people invisible, at a moment when this country continues to escalate militarily. All the things that concern Dr. King, those that, that triple threat, those three evils that King talked about, um, are more out of control now than ever before. And so it's one thing to engage in the symbolism of placing our hand on his Bible. It's quite another to get down to the real work of the, uh, the, the substantive work that King would want us to be doing uh, were he here now. So that on Monday, President Obama will be in the foreground, but Dr. King clearly stands uh, and looms large in the background, as the backdrop, if you will. And so I think the question that we have to ask ourselves now is the same question Dr. King asked when he was alive. Uh, life's most persistent and urgent question, said King, is what are you doing for others? Life's most persistent. An urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And so, if we can't make the world safe for his legacy by making poverty, the eradication of poverty, a priority, then something is wrong uh, with our commitment, our commitment to King's legacy. And so, tonight, we're going to continue to do our small part to try to make poverty and its eradication a priority in the nation here at George Washington University.
And uh, Tavis, all, all the past few months, all this emphasis uh, in the in the media and in Congress on the fiscal cliff, uh, but the mm -hmm. little talk about the growing nature of uh, the gr the spread of poverty in America and how m the reduction of many of these quote entitlement programs will lead to even greater poverty. Yep. The president's been given uh, high marks, as you know, by his supporters and by others in the media certainly has declared him the winner in these January fiscal cliff negotiations. But, of course, you and Amy both know that we won't really know how good this deal was in January until we get to March, when we get to the debt ceiling conversation and when these entitlement cuts are on the table. I've said many times before that budgets are moral documents. Budgets are moral documents. And when we get to this kind of debate uh, in March about these uh, entitlement cuts, then we're going to see how good this deal in January allegedly was. But something is wrong when your economic policy has you teetering on cliffs and bumping up against ceilings. That's no way to run a country. It's certainly no way to prioritize poverty. The bottom line is that President Obama ought to do two things, and he ought to do them quickly. Number one, he ought to give a major public policy address on the eradication of poverty. Here's a guy who starts out as a community organizer, who speaks eloquently of, of Dr. King, who has a bust of Dr. King in the White House Oval Office, has—will uh, be inaugurated on King's holiday. But what are we going to do about pushing our president? to give a major public policy address on the eradication of poverty, number one, and number two, then to call and convene a White House conference on the eradication of poverty, bring the experts together, and create a national plan that can cut poverty in half in 10 years and eradicate it in 25. So first, a major public policy address, and secondly, convening this conference to put together a national plan. We're going to talk about that tonight and ask the public to, in, to help us engage the president on this issue by going to our website a future without poverty dot com and signing a letter that we're pushing out to the White House asking the president to do those very two things. Tavis, uh, yesterday, President Obama convened a large gathering. Many of the people there were victims. Um, the Newtown, Connecticut uh, mass killings that took place, survivors were there, as well as other mass killings. Uh, President Obama had Joe Biden, the vice president, convene uh, uh, a commission to look at what should happen around the issue of gun violence, and they came out with their recommendations yesterday. Do you see this as a model for what you want to happen around poverty? Absolutely. Um, and I want to be clear, there's a lot on the president's plate, but that's what it means to be president, to try to manage um, the richest nation in the world that ought not to have more and more people falling into poverty, a, a nation that, that ought not um, buy the argument um, that just because you want sensible gun control legislation that somehow the Second Amendment is under attack. There's a huge gap between repealing the Second Amendment and sensible gun laws. I'm glad to see uh, the president take this issue on. But it is the case that in his first term, he received an F from the Brady campaign on gun control legislation, an F. So I, I, I think that we're seeing now that he's going to uh, improve his grade on that if he stiffens his spine and stands firm on these executive actions, and moreover, and more importantly, the fight that he's going to have to engage with Congress. So I'm glad to see him taking these steps. Having said that, look what it took to get here. I mean, look at all these masks. I mean, the, the fact that those victims were there at the White House for this announcement speaks to the fact, Amy, that we've allowed this to go on and on and on, and only when the most innocent and precious children in our nation are shot down do we finally get the backbone to take these issues seriously? And that's my point, that I don't know what else has to happen for us to recognize that poverty is threatening our very democracy, that poverty is now a matter of national security. Uh, and when you tackle poverty, you deal with these other issues that are tentacles of poverty, uh, a horrible education system and lack of housing and lack of good jobs with a living wage, et cetera, et cetera. So poverty ought to be something, I think, that the president uh, can wrap his legacy around if he wants to have a legacy of which he and we can be proud. Uh, Tyrus, I'm wondering if, if, if your campaign that you've been going around the country, whether you feel it's had any impact on corporate leaders in America. Thirty years ago, the biggest private employer in America was General Motors, and every worker was, had a union job, a pension, and a middle-class situation. Now the biggest employer is Walmart, private employer, and most of their workers are in poverty themselves because of the low wages and the lack of benefits. Your sense that your campaign is having any impact on corporate leaders? Well, corporate America is hard to crack. I will say this, you know, we, you know, people go hard at Walmart, and, and I, I believe that companies ought to be respectful 
uh, of, of the health of their employees and, and the, the equity pay of their employees, et cetera. Uh, but this announcement they made about hiring these military vets, given the work that you cover here on the War and Peace Report, I think is significant. And um, so the, it, the point here is that corporations can lead. Uh, corporations can advance the conversation. For example, you know, in this country, uh, as the Supreme Court continues every so often to find these affirmative action cases, it has been the case that oftentimes corporate America has led the government when it comes to trying to address the issue of affirmative action. So that's not always the case. So I don't know what impact we're going to have or have had already. What I do know is that this president and all of our leaders in Washington typically don't tend to do much unless they get pushed. And now is the time for us to push all of our leaders on the issue of poverty and ask the president to provide some leadership on this. There is a link between gun violence and, and poverty. The younger you are, the more likely you are to be poor. The poor you are, the more likely you are to be subject to random gun violence. Uh, and when we have a conversation about Sandy Hook, we have to also remember that black and brown kids are gunned down in this country every day and nobody says anything. Tavis, as we wrap up, what you're doing tonight at George Washington University and then the tour you're taking afterwards. Yeah. So tonight, George Washington University, doors open at 5 o'clock. If you're in the D.C. area, we go live on C-SPAN tonight at 6.30 for a spirited debate. Cornell West and Jeffrey Sachs and Jonathan Kozel, uh, but also Newt Gingrich and others. So it's going to be a spirited debate about how we make poverty a priority. That's tonight. And then we'll start our tour tomorrow night at Butler University in Indianapolis, going to colleges and universities for the next week or two, trying to get young people engaged on this very issue of making poverty a priority in the nation. A future withoutpoverty.com is where you can get all the details. Tavis Smiley, we want to thank you for being with us, a television radio broadcaster on public television and radio, New York Times bestselling author tonight at George Washington University, a summit on poverty that does it for our show. On Monday, we'll be broadcasting live from the Capitol on Martin Luther King Day and the inauguration. Uh, we'll be broadcasting from 8 Eastern Standard Time, our regular start time for Democracy Now!, right through 1 o'clock, broadcasting the inaugural ceremonies and bringing in different voices from all over this country. Check out democracynow.org. Democ Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.